Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How They Do That. This week we have Kelly Kerr joining us. Kelly was a photojournalist for 20 years. 14 of those years were spent at the Tulsa World. Now Kelly is an instructor at the Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. He teaches photography as well as videography. So thank you for joining us, Kelly. Mark, it's my pleasure to be with you via phone, video, whatever you want to call this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's sort of wacky. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your life as a uh, photojournalist. So you did that for 20 years. Uh, what was your everyday life like back then? Well, it was a lot of hustle and bustle, a lot of busy hours, a lot of weird hours. Uh, but when I got out of college 20 some years ago, uh, I set off on an adventure in newspaper photography. I fell in love with it and it's taken me halfway around the world and it's been a pleasure but it's it's really given me opportunity to do things uh, I never dreamed I would be doing um, I spent the last 14 or so with the Tulsa world in Tulsa Oklahoma and uh, during that time I shot a lot of sports and everything from Super Bowls to Final Fours uh, I did 12 golf majors and then a lot of natural disasters if you live in Oklahoma long enough you're gonna see a few tornadoes but I also got in on the, my, my career is kind of, uh, as I look back at it, was really uh, a part of uh, the war scene, uh, including Desert Storm and now the Iraqi War. I spent a, a great majority of my time uh, shooting uh, soldiers, uh, leaving and returning from war. And as I look back, that's really been a uh, thing that stands out as far as an aspect of my career in the media. Well, and some of those photos that you took of World War II veterans, I, I really enjoyed looking at those, and I like the way that you honored the veterans uh, that have served in the past. So thank you for that. You bet. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the advice that you give to your students who are looking to become photojournalists. Are there a few things that you can recommend for people that might be looking to do that with their uh, careers? My students, the, the biggest issue I, I run into it with them is they don't shoot enough uh, uh, photos. They, they'll do the assignments in class, but what they have to realize is they have to be shooting all the time. It's not just something they can, they can mark off their list and keep going. They really have to constantly be shooting and working on their eye and, and knowing their equipment and learning their equipment. And I think another key to photojournalism, uh, two things, you got to move, you have to move all the time, and I mean physically move with your feet. And then the second thing is you have to be watching, you have to be looking. Uh, I think one of the greatest things about photography is not necessarily the operation of the equipment or the technical side, uh, but is that you're aware of your surroundings and you're able to not only uh, capture imagery, but you're able to notice it as, it as you move around inside whatever situation you get into. And a lot of people can't do that, but those people that can, can master that technique of being uh, aware of their surroundings while they're working and not miss uh, maybe a moment that would occur uh, either right or left or behind you, then those people, I, I tend to see those people as being the most successful in the editorial field. Those are some really good tips. Um, in fact, a lot of times uh, I get a little bit frustrated with students that are constantly asking me about equipment and forgetting about all the other stuff, the mental exercises that you need to do. So it's really good to hear you say that. Um, well, we really want to talk to you about um, some of your work with the 5D Mark II and the 7D, and specifically the video you shot of Phil Marshall at South by Southwest at Yellow Dog Studios. Absolutely. Yellow Dog Studios was at one time located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I have uh, several friends that owned and operated it. Uh, and they had contacted me and said that they wanted to open up the studio during South by Southwest, which is one of the largest uh, music, I'm actually wearing the t-shirt today by the way, uh, but it's, it's actually one of the largest music festivals in the Midwest or uh, in the United States for that matter. And they wanted to open up the studio all week during the day to let artists come in and track songs and then we would offer them not only the audio track, but I would do a video of each performance and then I would edit that together and along with the audio track the artist would leave with a video and an audio uh, recording of their performance. And so talk to us about the Phil Marshall video. First of all let's talk about 
um, how you shot it. Tell us what uh, equipment you used to get that video uh, made. Absolutely. Uh, I did a two camera setup. Now it was, it was fairly easy because I didn't have to worry about sound at that point. Because we were recording the audio through thousands of dollars worth of audio equipment, but I, we did shoot it on a 5D Mark II, a Canon 5D Mark II, and a Canon 7D. And the, the way I constructed uh, the shoot was I had, I uh, hired an assistant to basically operate the 5D. So anytime you see a, a boom move or, a, or a, a, a sweeping move of some sort, that was the 5D. And then I was hand holding the 7D uh, with a Zacuto rig and just to give it a, just so it wasn't too pretty. I didn't want it to be too smooth. And did you use a jib or a dolly in those shots? It looked like you had a small jib in some of those scenes. Was that what you used, or how did you, how'd you do the camera movements? Well, we sure did, and, and Mark, we cheated that, as a matter of fact. That is a, a Calumet boom arm for a strobe light. And uh, instead of buying an expensive jib or uh, boom arm, I basically took that with me to Austin, which I use in, in my studio work in Tulsa. So I just took a, a super clamp, mounted the 5D Mark II on top of the boom arm, and, and then let uh, Cabe, was the young man's name, I just let him kind of move the camera around as smooth as we could get it. It wasn't perfect, but um, that's kind of the, that's, that's I think what kind of separates photographers when you can actually uh, do a little MacGyver work in your, in your photography. You know, if you can make it work with a paper clip and some bubble gum, then uh, you, you can get further down the road. Yeah, it looks really good. I like it. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about the post-production? I know that when we shoot with a 5D Mark II, a lot of the files, they come in as uh, H.264 files, and it takes a lot of time to edit with those because of the rendering times. So how did you handle that, and how do you work with those compressed files out of the camera? Well, fortunately, uh, while I was in Austin, Texas, Canon came out with a plug-in for Final Cut Pro that actually takes the H.264 uh, files and recompresses them uh, as Apple ProRes files. So not only does that do away with rendering, it also brings your files in uh, at, at their full resolution. So you get the full quality of the clip whenever you drop it into your timeline and, and start to work with it. The beauty of that is you get the quality and you don't have to render. So you're, it, it, it makes your, your footage look better and it also cuts down on your, work, uh, your workflow because it, you don't, you're not having to render. Uh, my main concern, uh, I'm not the, the best uh, color correction guy in Final Cut Pro, uh, but basically my goal was to make the footage from the 5D Mark II and the footage from the 7D match. And I, I think I got fairly close. Uh, the colors are, are really similar and then uh, trying to match up the contrast and make sure the, the lighting hit both cameras uh, in the same way. Well, awesome. Well, unfortunately, Kelly, we're out of time. Uh, we got a lot of great information out of this interview, so thank you very much for joining us today. Hey, it's my pleasure, Mark, and to all the aspiring photographers out there, keep shooting and uh, keep trying. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Well, if you want to see more of Kelly's work, you can go to the Adorama Learning Center, where we've posted some of his, vi some of his videos from Vimeo.com. Um, as well as you can learn some tips and techniques for shooting with your DSLR. And as always, if you have a question about photography or photography related gear, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining us and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.